Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to discuss the eight major blood types found within humans. For each blood type, we'll go through what antigens are on the surfaces of red blood cells, what antibodies are circulating within the blood plasma, we'll talk about how to do blood typing to figure out what type of blood you are, and we'll finish with hemolytic disease of the newborn, a potentially common and potentially harmful issue that can arise from the sharing of incompatible blood. So let's start with whether or not and how you are A, B, AB, or O blood types. And it has to do with whether or not you have A, B, both antigens, or none of them. So if you have A antigens on your cells, then you are blood type A. Now if you're AB, you will have A as well. If you are blood type B, you will have B antigens. And if you have AB blood, then you will have B antigens as well. Now, if you're O, you're not going to have A or B. Now, what comes after this is going to determine whether or not you are positive or negative, And it has to do with the presence or absence of rhesus factor, a, the name that comes from the rhesus monkey in which it was discovered, a not too distant relative of our own species. Now, if you are a positive, then you will have rhesus factor on your cells. So that could be A positive, B positive, AB positive, or O positive. If you do not have rhesus factor, then you are going to be classified as negative. So here we have our eight major blood types. A, B, AB, O positive, and the negative counterparts. Now what's going to determine the difference between A versus B antigens. How are they actually different? So for this, you have to look at the type of monosaccharides or simple sugars that are attached to the protein within that blood cell membrane. So all these blood types will have cells with proteins on them, on the membranes. And then it's all going to be about the variability in monosaccharides attached. What types and how many? So we'll start with galactose. Now type A will have a single galactose, abbreviated as G. Type B will have two galactoses. AB will have a total of three because you take the one from A and two plus two from B. So there's your galactoses. Okay, and type O will also have a galactose. So what about fructose? For fructose, there is one in A, there is one in B, and then AB will have two. Again, one from A, one from the B antigen. And then for type O, there is a fructose. Now the final one to take a look at will be something called galactosamine. And for type A, I'll abbreviate GA, there's one. For type B, there is no galactosamine. And for type AB, there is one galactosamine from the A antigens that it has on its surface. Type O does not have galactosamine. So here you have differences between what's determining A versus B antigens. And you can see, again, another big difference between all the blood types. So those are the antigens that determine what blood type you are. Now, how about the antibodies that might be circulating in your blood plasma? Now, for the antibodies, they're not going to be present upon birth. Typically, these, an these antibodies will develop within two months of being born, and some will require exposure to an incompatible blood type. Now, if you are blood type A, you will create antibodies against the foreign antigen. So you will create antibodies against B because you do not have B antigens in your bloodstream. Therefore, it is foreign, should be attacked. Now, if you are blood type B, you will produce antibodies against A. If you are blood type AB, you do not produce any of those antibodies because you should not attack your own self antigens. A and B. Now, if you're blood type O, you don't have A or B. Therefore, you will produce antibodies against A, and you will produce antibodies 
against B. Now these antibodies will develop through exposure to pollen and to bacteria within your food, within your drinks, um, within your environment all over, which have these same exact antigens as your blood cells. Now if you do not have B antigens, your blood type A, when you ingest bacteria and you ingest pollen that have B antigens, your immune system gets sensitized, attacks those antigens, creates antibodies, and now they have those antibodies stored in case you also get an incompatible blood transfusion. Now the same thing happens if your blood type B with A antigens being foreign, okay? Now what about RH? Now RH is one of those antibodies that will not be present except if you ever get exposed to an incompatible blood type. So if you are positive you have RH, you will not produce RH antibodies because that is what you have. However, if you are negative, so if you're O negative, there will be RH antibodies. If you are B negative, there will be RH antibodies. AB negative, RH antibodies, and O negative, RH antibodies. And again, those will only develop if A negative, for example, ever got a blood transfusion from someone with RH positive blood. So that's where the RH antibodies would come from. So now here you have all these blood types. How exactly do you determine what blood type you actually are? Now to do that, you would do a blood typing experiment in which you would take a few drops of blood and I'll do two panels here that we can see what two different blood types look like. And what you would end up doing is you would add some antibodies against RH, or sorry, against A, antibodies against B. Let's do that for both panels here. And you would add antibodies against RH. Now, if you were O negative, meaning you do not have any antigens on your blood cells for A, B, or RH, then it would look like the panel on the left but also the panel on the right. When you put drops of blood and you add antibodies against specific antigens, you would see no clumping because there's nothing for those antibodies to bind onto. Okay, now let's say you're gonna be, for simplicity's sake here, let's say you're A positive. That's the blood type you are. Now when you put the drops of blood on that panel, what you would end up seeing is you will see clumping. where you added A antibodies because they bound to the A antigens on your blood cells. You would also see clumping in the RH because when you added RH antibodies, it clumped to the RH antigens that you have. Now there was no B clumping because you don't have B antigens. There's nothing for the antibodies against B to clump onto. Now let's say you are A, B, positive. What would you see? Well, you would certainly see clumping in A because there's A antigens for A antibodies to bind to. You would see clumping for B. And you would see clumping for RH because anytime you add those antibodies, there's antigens there for those antibodies to bind onto. So there we have it. That's how you would blood type. You're basically using the information that you know as far as what antigens are present on the blood cells and what antibodies will bind to those antigens. You use that information to do these blood panels for blood typing. Okay, so let's finish up here with hemolytic disease of the newborn. And the basis is going to revolve around the presence and absence of RH factor on blood cells. Now, in order for this potentially destructive disease to occur, the female in red here needs to be RH negative. And she would need to breed with an RH positive father. So we're going to show breeding there with a plus sign. So they breed and they produce an offspring that's growing within the, the mother. Now, the offspring's RH or RH negative status will be determined by the father. 
So if the father is Rh negative, then baby will be Rh negative. And here, if baby was Rh negative, there would be no complications at all because mom is a like status. She is also Rh negative. The problem arises here when mom, who is Rh negative, breeds with an Rh positive male. Baby, now, there's baby, is Rh positive. Now that is going to be foreign. So mom's immune system here, now keep in mind that maternal blood supply and fetal blood supply are exchanged. So they come in contact. So in other words, the immune cells circulating within the maternal blood supply will come in contact with this growing fetus and the developing cells that have RH on them, which is foreign. So as the fetus develops, the mom, her immune system, will start to ramp up all of these anti-RH antibodies against this RH positive baby, which is foreign. She doesn't have RH. That's weird. Get it out of here. Now, fortunately, baby one will be born before the antibody response gets extreme enough to cause any harm. But now what you have here is you have the maternal immune system that has all these antibodies against RH that can be easily produced if ever exposed again to that potential quote unquote pathogen that is growing inside her. So if they were to ever have another child, the child would be RH positive because dad was RH positive. Mom has all these antibodies that can be produced quickly which will then attack the developing fetus and developing erythrocytes and other cells within that, that developing offspring. Therefore, what you end up having here is this massive immune response against this developing fetus, which can cause a multitude of effects, such as mental disabilities, mental disorders, to other developmental disabilities and disorders, even, even death, right? So this is a major problem but fortunately, what can, what can happen here is that the, the mother can get screened for this potential problem that could occur. And if she is found to be Rh negative and dad is found to be Rh positive, mother can take something called Rogam, which is essentially an antibody against Rh antibodies. And what Rogam will do is it will go and bind to all these RH antibodies that mom can produce, inactivate them, in other words, kind of just take them out of the story there, so that way the RH babies growing inside the mother can be born without being attacked by her immune system, and then you will get happy, healthy babies being born. So what we went through in summary were the blood types, the antigens present, the antibodies present, how to blood type, hemolytic disease of the newborn, and the last thing that you should be able to do with this information is figure out who can donate blood to who and who can receive blood from who. Who is the universal recipient? Who can receive blood from every blood type? Who is the universal donor? Who can give blood to every blood type? So thank you for watching. Um, and I will see you on the next video.